Hey Lightweights, today I am going to be reacting to Back to the Future 3. I'm really excited for this because obviously it is the end of the Back to the Future trilogy, at least I think it is. Um, so I'm really curious to see what happens and how it all concludes, how it wraps up. Obviously we know, well I guess we can assume based off of Back to the Future 2 that this one is going to be in... Um, Excuse me, hold on. I just had a random cough. Um, we can probably assume that this one's going to be in the 1800s because that's when Doc gets sent back to and then he sent the letter that was like the Western. I don't know if he said a specific date. I'm sure he did, but it's been a month since I watched the last movie, so I don't remember. But it was in the 1800s, 1880s sometime. Um, so I'm really excited for that. I think that would be really cool. But I have absolutely no idea where the story will go there. So I think that will be really interesting uh, and I'm excited for that. But I've been absolutely loving this trilogy. The first two movies were fantastic. So I'm really excited to watch this and kind of see how it all concludes. I'd also like to thank you all for being patient with me. I know for a little while there, I was I upped the posting schedule to every week uh, and then the schedule got crazy again and I dropped back down to every other. So it's been, it's been um, less content than I was doing for a bit there. So thank you for being patient with me. Um, I was in Europe visiting family for a while. And then when I came back, I had no childcare for a while. So it's been very difficult to get back on track. And also I am from New York and I feel like probably most of the Northeast United States is the same way. But in New York, we try to jam pack everything we possibly want to do in a year into the two months that we actually have decent weather. Uh, so it's just been very busy all around. Um, but Long story short, thank you so much for being patient with me as I get my schedule back on track. Um, and if you're new here, please make sure you subscribe. Or if you've been around but you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. And definitely hit that bell button. That way you know when I post future stuff because we will be moving on from Back to the Future after this into different franchises and you won't want to miss that. All right, here we go. That little chill is just so magical. Saturday, November 12th, 1955, 10.03 p.m. So this is probably the end of the second movie. It'd be so trippy to be Doc and have this actually happen to you because you see Marty go and then like, what, 10 seconds later, he's back again and you're like, what? <laughs> And then it hurts your brain to think about because for Marty, so much has happened. And for him, it's been like maybe a minute tops. <laughs> I'm back from the future. <laughs> back to the future three. Back, back, back to the future. That house is gorgeous. It's crazy to think that he went from that to living in a garage and surrounded by fast food chains and gas stations. <laughs> the hoverboard. Last night's time travel experiment was apparently a complete success. Marty and the time vehicle were transported forward through time into the year 1985. After that, after that, I can't recall what happened. He doesn't remember Marty's there. Ah. <laughs> oh, no. Here and it does make sense. I came back to 1955 again with you, the you from 1985, because we had to get a book from Biff. We're in the DeLorean and it got struck by lightning and he got sent back to 1885. If the me of the future is now in the past, how could you possibly know about it? You sent me a letter. Dear my. <laughs> I've been living happily these past eight months in the year 1885. The overload shorted out the time circuits and destroyed the flying circuits. Amazing. I actually end up as a blacksmith in the old west. Pretty heavy, huh? A 1955 counterpart, that's me, should have no problem repairing it so that you can drive it back to the future. I repeat, do not attempt to come back here to get me. And please take care of Einstein for me. He's your dog, Doc. Einstein, it's what you call your dog in 1985. been a good kind and loyal friend to me and you made a real difference in my life Aww. 
I never knew I could write anything no, so touching. No, no, Doc, it's beautiful. Oh, it's all right, Copernicus. There are plenty worse places to be than the Old West. I could have ended up in the Dark Ages. They will probably would have burned me at a stake as a heretic or something. We may have to blast. That was a cool transition. I think you woke up the dead with that blast. Take this camera. I want to document everything. <laughs> Stop, that's I so cute. Time. I attempted to reach the center of the earth. I spent weeks preparing that expedition. I didn't even get this far. <laughs> of course, I was only 12 at the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's when I was 11 that I first read 20,000 leagues out of the sea. It's then that I realized that I must devote my life to science. Aw, I love Dad, that. Check it out. Look at this. My initials! Just like in Journey to the Center of the Earth! I'd be terrified that the whole thing would collapse on me if I started disrupting stuff like that. It's been buried here for 70 years, two months, and 13 days. The attached schematic, schematic, schematic diagram will allow you to build a replacement unit. No wonder this circuit failed. It says made in Japan. <laughs> what do you mean, Doc? All the best stuff is made in Japan. Unbelievable. <laughs> Go to the library and look myself up in the old newspaper archives. Probably. You're the one that's always saying, you know, it's not good to know too much about your own destiny. You're right, Marty. Copernicus! Come on, boy! Copernicus, come on, let's go home, boy. What's wrong, Copernicus? Come on. Come on, let's go home. Shot in the back? Wait, wait, shot in the back by Buford? Who's Buford? Doc! Doc! Died September 7th. 1885, that's one week after you wrote the letter. In eternal memory by his beloved Clara. Who the hell is Clara? Barney, please don't stand there. Help! Oh, right. Shot in the back by Buford Tannen. What kind of a future do you call that? Buford Tannen was a notorious gunman whose short temper and a tendency to drool earned him the nickname Mad Dog. William McFly and family. My great grandfather's name was William. That's him. Oh my God looking guy that's so trippy doc look great scott it's me it is me who goes back there and gets shot after you fix the time circuits i mean i'm going back to 1885 and i'm bringing you home this timeline's all messed up <laughs> the clothes fit yeah everything except the boots doc they're kind of tight haven't you ever seen a western yeah i have doc <laughs> Clint Eastwood never wore anything like this. <laughs> hey, who? That's right. You haven't heard of him yet. Oh! Why? Right, right, right. I'm sorry. I was lost in the timeline. Doc, look, as soon as I get there, I'll put him on, I promise. Oh! What about that floating device? Hoverboard. All right. <laughs> Remember where you're going. There are no roads. And there's a small cave over there, which will be a perfect place to hide the time vehicle. I wrote the letter on September 1st, so we'll send you back the very next day. I get shot on Monday the 7th, so you have five days to locate me. According to my letter, I'm a blacksmith, so I probably have a shop somewhere. That is so much to remember. If I drive straight towards the screen, I'm going to crash into those Indians. They'll instantly be transported to 1885, and those Indians won't even be there. Right. It hurts my brain. <laughs> See you in the future. You mean the past? Exactly. Ready, Ready! <laughs> Why are you just shooting the gun now? Mm, it's gonna be close. Oh! <laughs> Don't hit any of them. Where's the cave? Oh, is that the cave? He's lucky he saw that. That's tiny. I don't remember this scene in Dances with Wolves. Get back in the car, get back in the car, back in the car! Oh, I didn't realize how his outfit was like science-y. That's so cute. Oh no. What's leaking? Damn, I ripped the fuel line. 
McFly Farm. <laughs> well, you're my, you're my, my. Who are you? The name's McFly. Maggie McFly. What's <laughs> your name, be sir? Well, it's Mc... Eastwood. Uh, Clint. Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Okay with him using his name? I feel like that's copyright. You'll be excusing me, Mr. Eastwood, while I tend to William. Oh, it's okay, William. It's okay. Chicken for his pants. <laughs> that's William? Aye. William Sean McFly, the first of our family to be born in America. Sure, and he likes you, Mr. Eastwood. Maggie, I've got supper. I'm not oh. going to pry into a man's personal affairs, but. <laughs> that looks horrible. <laughs> My car horse broke down and, and a bear ate my boots and I guess I just forgot my hat. Would you like some water? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You can stay tonight in the barn. And tomorrow, I'll take you as far as the railroad tracks. You can follow him straight on into town. I think you'll find the barn comfortable. Never had any complaints about it from the pigs. Oh. Mm. Seamus, a word with you. <laughs> Will you hold him for a minute? Are you sure you're not after bringing a curse on this house, taking him in like that? He's such a strange young man. Aye, but I've just got a feeling about him, Maggie. Look how my Bobby takes to him. Little Will never takes to strangers. So you're my great-grandfather, first McFly born in America. <laughs> and you peed on me. <laughs> wow, that looks a lot different. Joe Statler. That sounds familiar. I know that name was in the other two movies, but I can't think of what it was now. Proceeds to construct the clock tower. Oh shit, the clock that he had the picture with! Oh! A. Jones manure! Is that the same manure that Biff drives into all the time? There it is! I was gonna say, it looks like he was in some deep shit. Patch. Take a look and see what just breezed in the door. <laughs> Why, I didn't know the circus was in town. Must have got that shirt off on a dead Chinese. <laughs> Wait! He's an Aristocats! The bartender's like, please, no. Don't be coming in my establishment like that. What'll it be, stranger? Ice water. <laughs> Ice water. <laughs> in here, we pour whiskey. I'm trying to find the blacksmith. Hey, McFly! Thought I done told you never to come in. Uh, you ain't Seamus McFly. What's your name, dude? Uh, Mark Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of stupid name is that? What's that writing mean? Knee K. What is that? Some sort of Asian talk or something? <laughs> I'm looking for that no good cheating blacksmith. You seen him? No, sir, Mr. Tannen. I have not. You're mad, Doc Tannen. Oh, 
Oh shit! <laughs> that was not the right thing to say. Nobody calls me Mad Dog. Oh! You better run. You better run, squirrel. God, get him! <laughs> Ooh, that would hurt. We got ourselves a new courthouse! High time we had a hanging! What the heck? Ooh. Shoot the fleas off a dog's back at 500 yards, Tannen! And it's pointed straight at your head! You owe me money, Blacksmith. My horse threw a shoe. And seeing as you was the one that done the shoe, and I say that makes you responsible. Since you never paid me for that job, I say that makes us even. <laughs> oh, see, I was on my horse when it threw the shoe, and I got thrown off. And that caused me to bust a perfectly good bottle of fine Kentucky Red Eye. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Bring him back, and I'll be sure him. I don't shot that horse. Well, that's your problem, Tannen. You better be looking behind you when you walk, because one day you're going to get a bullet in your back. Why would you shoot the horse for throwing a shoe? I gave you explicit instructions <laughs> not to come here, but to go directly back to 1985. But it's good to see you, Marty. If you walk around town dressed like that, you're liable to get shot. <laughs> you and don't say. Why did he in that outfit? You did. You did. <laughs> shot in the back by Buford Tannen over a matter of eighty dollars. Now I wish I'd paid him off. And who's this beloved Clara? I don't know anyone named Clara. I thought maybe she was a girlfriend of yours. I can never take that risk. Do you remember last week at the town meeting when you volunteered to meet the new school teacher at the station when she came in? Oh, that's gonna be Clara! Her name's Miss Clayton. Clara Clayton. So they fell in love quick then. The idea that I could fall in love at first sight? It's romantic nonsense. Ah, come on, Doc. It's not science. Well, it just hits you. It's like lightning. All right, please don't say that. That's the way it was me and Jennifer. I mean, we couldn't keep our eyes off each other. But you also couldn't keep your eyes off every other girl, so... <laughs> we just left you there on the porch. Don't worry, Marty. You'll be fine. Once we're back in 1985, you just have to go over to the house and wake her up. <laughs> All that for one cube of ice? Oh, listen, Doc, it tore a hole in the gas tank when I was landing, so we're gonna have to patch it up and get some gas. You mean we're out of gas? About gasoline. We can't get the DeLorean up to 88 miles. I love this shot. So what do we do? That was such a cool shot! I love that. Hey, good old-fashioned horsepower. <laughs> uh, 24! Bartender says that's the strongest stuff they got. Oh, that's not what you want. If he made his own refrigerator, he can make his own gasoline. Isn't it just a byproduct of something else? Maybe. <laughs> Probably not. Probably just sound like an idiot. It's fine. <laughs> We'll wait until winter, when the lake freezes over. Winter? Doc, what are you talking about? Monday, it's three days away. If we could figure out a way to push it up to 88 miles an hour. Huh? Mmm. How fast did she go? Why, I've had her up to 55 myself. Well, you think it's possible to get it up to 90? Well, I suppose if you had a straight stretch of track with a level grade, and if you could get the fire hot enough, and I'm talking about hotter than the blazes of hell and damnation itself, then yes, it might be possible to get her up that fast. It's a long stretch of level track that will still exist in 1985. This is where we'll push the DeLorean with the locomotive. This map calls Clayton Ravine show nationally. That must be the old Indian name for it. Is it going to be another Twin Pines incident? But according to this map, there is no bridge. 
Well, Doc, we can scratch that idea. You're just not thinking fourth dimensionally. Right, right, I have a real problem with that. The bridge will exist in 1985. Therefore, as long as we get the DeLorean up to 88 miles an hour before we hit the edge of the ravine, <laughs> we'll instantaneously arrive at a point in time where the bridge is completed. That's a big risk. What about the locomotive? <laughs> It'll be a spectacular wreck. Scott. Pull the reins, woman! Go, Doc, go! Oh, God. Oh! Wait, did the horses make it out okay? Oh, they did. Okay, good. Thank you, sir. You saved my... Oh! Why? Wait, I know her from stuff. Shit, what do I know her from? <laughs> Emmett Brown, I just say this. Um, Tell me that's Clara. Clayton. It is. Clara Clayton. It is! They were destined to meet no matter what! May I help you inside with these? Oh no, that won't be necessary. I can take care of it. But it's really no trouble. Doc, she says it's fine. Ma'am, good luck with the school teaching and everything. I'll straighten everything out with Mr. Stafford for the buckboard rental. Well, that would be very gentlemanly of you, Mr. Brown. Uh, Emmett. <laughs> I will see you again, won't I? Of course, you'll see lots of me. I have a shop in town. I'm a local scientist. A, a, a blacksmith. What sort of science? Uh, astronomy? Chemistry? Actually, I'm a student of all sciences. Hey, Doc. You gotta get going. Oh, yes. We have to get going. <laughs> Get it, Doc. After all, Miss Clayton almost ended up at the bottom of Clayton Ravine. Clayton Ravine. Oh, oh shit! Hey, Doc. Clayton Ravine was named after a teacher. They say oh. she fell in there a hundred years ago. Hundred years ago? That's this year. That she was supposed to go over in that wagon. And now I may have seriously altered history. It was a twin pine situ twin pine situation. I wish I'd never invented that infernal time machine. <laughs> it's caused nothing but disaster. Doc, Doc, this is Marty. Do you read me over? Check, Marty. Great, Doc. These things still work. I apologize for the crudity of this model, but yeah, I just... Yeah, no, Doc. It's not the scale. We load the DeLorean onto the tracks here on the spur, right by the old abandoned silver mine. The switch track is where the spur runs off the main line three miles out to Clayton, Shonash Ravine. A couple of the cars from the tender, throw the switch track, and then we'll hijack, borrow the locomotive, and use it to push the time machine. What does this mean? Point of no return. That's our fail-safe point. But once we pass this windmill, it's the future or bust. That is terrifying. That is terrifying. Tank pulling out of the station! No switch! Pull up! To the door, yeah! Up to 88 miles per hour! It couldn't be simpler. Sure about that? It's Clara! Quick! Cover the DeLorean! When my bags were thrown from the wagon, my telescope was damaged. I thought you might be able to repair it for me. I, I would pay you, of oh, course. No, no, no. I wouldn't think of charging you for this. If you move it this way, the image turns fuzzy. But if you turn it the other way... Everything becomes clear. <clears throat> Marty! Stop it! <laughs> Have it for you tonight. Tonight's the town festival. I wouldn't dream of having you work on my telescope during such an important occasion. Ask her to go. Oh. Well, actually, ma'am, yes, I don't think... Of getting... course, the festival. Ask her to go. Well, in that case, I'll see you this evening at the festival, Emmett. Ask her to go! Thank you for taking care of my telescope. You're quite welcome. I know we have more pressing issues, but come on. Have a little fun. It gives me great pleasure to dedicate this clock to the people of Hill County. That's the best 
That'd be so fun. No, Marty, in a way, it's fitting that you and I are here to witness this. Too bad I didn't bring my camera. Ready, gentlemen? The only problem is we'll never be able to show it to anybody. Is that CG Top? The beards look familiar. Find Clara, ask her to be in! Great music! Take this bottle, for example. You improved and refined. She looks so pretty! <laughs> you look very nice. Thank you. To, to, uh... I love you. Yay! I just want to look up real quick. What the hell I know her from? I know her from a bunch. No, 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 thank. Hey, Doc. This... Funny boy. Does Doc can dance. <laughs> That's so sweet. Surely you're not afraid to try something that a baby could do. Hey, I'm not afraid of nothing. Oh, come. Oh, not the magic phrase. Ease that hammer back there and squeeze off around real smooth. That's the way you do. <laughs> Can I try that again? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Damn. Where'd you learn to shoot like that? 7 Eleven. <laughs> An arcade machine? You gentlemen will have to check your firearms. Who's okay. gonna make us tenderfoot? You? Ten out of ten. I am. Marcia Strickland. If you can't read the sign, Tannen, I presume you can read this. <laughs> Smile, Marshal. After all, this is a party. The only party I'll be smiling at is the one that sees you at the end of a rope. <laughs> I like him. So that's how you handle him, son. And maintain discipline at all times. Remember that word. Discipline. <gasps> oh my god, how am I just realizing who that is? <laughs> That's great! Mr. Eastwood. That is nice amazing. See I see you got yourself some respectable clothes, lad. Hey, Frisbee. Far out. What was the meaning of that? <laughs> I love how happy he is! Dancing with that piece of calico. If I bury this muzzle deep enough in his back, nobody will hear the shot. I told you to watch your back, Smithy. Last time I used it, fella took two whole days to die. That means you'll be dead by about supper time Monday. Oh. Boy, keep the blacksmith company while I get acquainted with the Billy! No! Maybe I'll just take my $80 worth out of her! Yeah. I bet there's something you can do that's worth $80. Oh! Oh! Good job, but next time, go for the balls. Damn you, Tannen! No. I damn you to hell! The first frisbee throw! Look, just leave my friends alone. Oh, what's wrong, dude? You yellow! Marty, you have to get past this. You have to get past this. Nobody calls me yellow. Let's finish it right now. Not now, Buford. Uh, Marshall's got our gun. Like I said, we'll finish this tomorrow. Tomorrow we're robbing the Pine City stage. What about Monday? We doing anything Monday? Uh, no, Monday be fine. You can kill him on Monday. I'll be back <laughs> this way on Monday. I'm going to pencil you in for your murder on Monday. <laughs> I do my killing before breakfast. Seven o'clock. That's early. I'm not even awake at seven. Eight o'clock. I do my killing after breakfast. <laughs> all right, now break it up. What's all this about? You causing trouble here, Tannen? Just a little personal matter between me and Eastwood. All right, folks, come on. This is a party. Come on, let's have some fun. If you ain't here, I'll hunt you and shoot you down like a duck. Dog, Buford. Shoot him down like a dog. Duck hunt. <laughs> Let's 
go, boys! I'd like for you to have this brand new Colt Peacemaker and gun belt, free of charge. Now he's gonna look like Lenny Eastwood. Of course, uh, you understand that if you lose, I'm taking it back. Well, he'll be dead, so it won't matter. <laughs> he reminds me of poor Mark. Hi, who? Me brother. Now, wait a minute, you have a brother named Martin McFly? Had a brother. Martin used to let men provoke him into fight. That's how he got a bowie knife shoved through his belly in a saloon <laughs> in Virginia City. Never consider the future, poor Martin. God rest his soul. Sure, and I hope you're considering the future, Mr. Eastwood. I think about it all the time. <sighs> Emmett, do you think we'll ever be able to travel to the moon? Definitely. Although not for another 84 years and not on trains. We'll have space vehicles, capsules settle off, rockets, devices that create giant explosions. Explosions so powerful. They just... break the pull of the Earth's gravity and send the projectile through outer space. You, you're quoting Jules Verne from the Earth to the Moon. You've read Jules Verne. I adore Jules. Verne. <laughs> so, uh, She's perfect for him. I never met a woman who liked Jules Verne before. I never ever met a man like you before. I love how he always finds a way to have technology make his breakfast for him. But did he come home last night? That's the real question. Doc. <laughs> I love how his butt cheek's still out. You talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. Go ahead. Make my day. Good morning, Mr. Eastwood. Interest you in a new suit for tomorrow? Ah, uh, I'm I'm fine. Thanks. Oh, Doc, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. Look at that, the tombstone. All right, let me see that photo back. My name, it's vanished. Hey, that's great, Doc. The tombstone itself and the date still remain. That doesn't make sense. Well, I don't want to buy a suit. No, this is for your coffin. So, may not be my name that's supposed to end up on this tombstone. It may be yours. Great Scott. I know, this is heavy. <laughs> you heard what that son of a bitch called me last night? Marty, you can't go losing your judgment every time someone calls you a name. That's exactly what causes you to get into that accident in the future. I know, he's learned nothing. Marty. Yeah? I've made a decision. I'm staying here. I'm in love with Clara. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Doc, we don't belong here. I have to live my life according to what I believe is right in my heart. Can't he bring her, though? Doc, you're a scientist. What's the right thing to do up here? Because technically, she's not supposed to be alive anymore either. Or would that just cause, like, a different paradox problem because she's still in the wrong time if she goes? I don't know, maybe we can just take Clara with us. Yeah, see? Future, I caution you about disrupting the continuum for your own personal benefit. Therefore, I must do no less. It's Emmett, Clara. Won't you come in? I've come to say goodbye. And wherever you go and take me with you. I can't, Clara. If, if you sincerely do love me, then tell me the truth. I'm from the future. I came here in a time machine that I invented, and tomorrow I have to go back to the year 1985. I understand, because you know I'm partial to the writings of Jules Verne. You concocted those mendacities in order to take advantage of me. Aww. All you had to say is I don't love you, and I don't want to see you anymore. That at least would have been respectful. But that's not the truth. Emmett, what can I get you? The usual? Whiskey, Chester. Emmett, are you sure you know what happened to you on the 4th of July? What happened to you on the 4th of July? It's a woman, right? You'll get over her. But you never know what the future might bring. Well, the future. Oh, I can tell you about the future. Oh, man, did I sleep? I don't know how you slept like that. Damn. In the future, 
We don't need horses. We have motorized carriages called automobiles. If everybody's got one of these auto horses, uh, does anybody walk or run anymore? For fun. Run for fun? What the hell kind of fun is that? <laughs> All I can do is picture the dog from Aristocats when I hear his voice. <laughs> Does he have? None. That's the first one. He hadn't touched it yet. <laughs> he just likes to hold it. I've lost her, Marty. There's nothing left for me here. All right, that's why you gotta come back with me. Where? Back to the future. Right. Let's get going. Here's to you, Blacksmith. <laughs> and to the future. Amen. Amen. Damn it, no! Damn it, I thought I was a lightweight. How many do you have? Just the one. Just the one? Come on, Doc. There's a fella that can't hold his liquor. Hey, he'd be lightweight too. I'll take a one-way ticket. Joey, let's make some wake-up juice. In about 10 <laughs> minutes, he's gonna be as sober as a priest on Sunday. Why do we have to cut these things so damn close? <laughs> Oh! That was basically me after I had smelling salts. That shit burns your brain. He's still out! Conrad, that was just a reflex action. No! Oh! Why do they have to make it so stressful every time? <sighs> well, something inside me told me I should be here. As if my future had something to do with it. Oh, oh my god. Are you an Irish one? I'm so stressed out. It's 8 o'clock. And I'm calling you out. All right, you got the gumps. I'm not really feeling up to this today. So I'm going to have to forfeit. What's that mean? <laughs> um, it means that you win without a fight. Hey, you can't do that! You know what I think? I think you ain't nothing but a gutless yellow turd! Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Doc, come on, sober up, buddy. Let's go. Come on. Guys, I'm proud of him. If you don't go out there... What? What if I don't go out there? You're a coward. Everybody everywhere will say Clint Eastwood is the biggest yellow belly in the West. Seven! <laughs> I already got a gun. <laughs> what does that look mean? I said that ten, you gutless yellow pie slinger! To be fair, he actually was He's a pie an slinger. Asshole. <laughs> I don't care what Tannen says, and I don't care what anybody else says either. <laughs> Listen, you got a back door to this place? Yeah, it's in the back. <laughs> Good job, Marty. Hey! Oh! No! Oh, they're never gonna make it in time! You got one minute to decide. I've never seen a man so broken up over a woman. What did you say her name was? Clara. Clara! But was this man tall with great big brown puppy dog eyes and long silvery flowing hair? You know him. <laughs> oh! Right here, Tannen! We're gonna have ourselves a good old country shootout. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> Bro, no. <laughs> I thought we could settle this like men. You thought wrong, dude. Oh. Well, I know they're not gonna kill him. I don't know how, but I know he's not dead. There's no way. There's no way they, they would do that. <laughs> oh! What's he have there? <laughs> oh!
<laughs> yes! The manure! And also, wasn't Biff in the second movie watching a Clint Eastwood movie where he had the metal underneath? You got anything to say? What? I hate manure. <laughs> Very stressed. <laughs> Marty's lucky he knew how to ride a horse. Harry! <laughs> Talk looks like he's enjoying this. Rage! Is this a hold up? It's a science experiment! <laughs> I wanted to do that all my life! <laughs> it's like Sheldon Cooper. What are these things, anyway? My own version of pestle logs. These three in the furnace will ignite sequentially, make the fire burn hotter, kick up the boiler pressure, and make the train go faster! to get out of the train and onto the car. The new gauge on the dashboard will tell us the boiler temperature. It's color coded to indicate when each star will fire. Hopefully we'll hit 88 miles per hour before the needle gets put past 2,000. What happens after it hits 2,000? The whole boiler explodes. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, come on, Clara. Oh. How is she supposed to get to the car? She's going to go into the ravine. Oh god, I forgot she's in heels though. Banger, it says. Oh, they're not making it. Come on! I can't have it, I'm scared! Oh, Jesus, they're not making this. They're gonna he's gonna jump off with her and they're gonna be stuck back here. I don't like that ending. Stop! Oh my god! This is too close. How fast am I? can that thing go? Holy shit! Now get in the car. Why are you riding off into the sunset? Where are you going? I don't like this ending. <laughs> Doc and Clara to go to the future. <sighs> Eastwood Ravine. <laughs> oh God. Get out of the car. Listen, I guess as long as Doc and Clara are happy and they can live their lives out to the fullest, 
That's a happy ending, but dang it. Well, Doc, it's destroyed. He didn't get to say goodbye, though. Hey, butthead, get away. Watch it, Biff. Forty. I, I didn't mean to scare you. I, I didn't recognize you in those clothes. I, you going cowboy, huh? Marty, what's wrong? We thought you went to the lake. You wore that to the lake? Thank God you guys are all back to normal. Hey, Marty, who are you supposed to be? Clint Eastwood? <laughs> Jennifer. Marty, I had the worst nightmare. <laughs> it's about the future. About us. And you got fired. Hildale, this is where we live. I, I mean, this this is where this is where we're gonna live. Marty, it was a dream. <laughs> How's it hanging, McFly? Hey, needles. Nice set of wheels. Let's see what she can do. No, thanks. What's the matter? Chicken? <laughs> no. We, we've grown past this. Grab a hold of something. We... Have you learned nothing? Aww. He did learn. <gasps> I would've hit that Rolls Royce. <laughs> Never coming back. I'm sure you're gonna miss him, Jen. What the hell? I'm sorry, what in the steampunk? Stop! Buddy! How? The family. <laughs> These are our boys. How? Jules. And Vern. Stop it. <laughs> Doc, I thought I'd never see you again. You can't keep a good side as down. <laughs> I saw how to come back right side. Well, I brought you a little souvenir. Of course it's a race! It means your future hasn't been written yet! Your future is whatever you make it! <laughs> so make it a good one! We will, Doc! Stand back! That's so much cooler than, Delor than the DeLorean! <laughs> back to the future! Already been there! to be continued oh my gosh that was wonderful okay that was like the perfect ending <laughs> at first I was really disappointed that they weren't gonna be able to say goodbye and they weren't going to be like together at the end but the way they did that was just perfect they both had their their happy endings they were able to say goodbye but they were also able to just do their own thing and I think that's great I love that um, so the whole trilogy was fantastic. I'm honestly surprised at how much I liked this third one. For me personally, a lot of times it's really hard for a series of movies to hold my interest and excitement through all of the films. I feel like a lot of times they don't know when to stop. <laughs> uh, you have a great, you have a great thing going and then you just want to keep I don't know if it's like keep making more money. It's probably what it is. Or if the the directors and the writers just love it. So they want to keep working with it. But a lot of times it just goes farther than it needs to. But I think they really did a great job. And I know you guys said that they didn't have the whole story written out from the beginning. But as someone watching it now, I never in a million years would have known that. Ever. To me, everything 
And I, I know I said this in the second one as well, but everything was just so perfectly meshed together. Um, I never would have known. There were so many things that were tiebacks to the second movie and the first movie and probably even little things that they did from the first movie that they put in the third movie that I didn't even realize. Like there were some things I noticed, like the manure. Um, there was one name that I recognized and I couldn't remember that was from, but I, I know it was something from the first and the second movie. So they just did, there were so many little things that all were just overarching, connecting to each other. And they just, it was brilliantly written. It was so good. I loved it. And it was again, fun, lighthearted. I think it was uh, I'm at an hour, like almost two hours, hour 58 right now. It flew by. I had no idea it was like, it's already been almost two hours. It's just fantastic. Um, obviously all of the acting is phenomenal, but I have to give credit where it's due. And I think, again, I said this in the second movie, but I'm going to say it again. The actor who plays the, um, the Biff's character or Buford in this, in this, uh, iteration is so talented. Like, I, I wasn't sure it was him for probably like longer than I should have been because he's just such a talented actor that I didn't realize that it was him. Like I knew, I knew the name, but I didn't realize it was that. It was just so, he, so talented, <laughs> so talented. Um, and I loved that little tie back where when he, where Biff was watching the Clint Eastwood movie in the second movie and he, Clint takes out the little piece of metal as like the bulletproof vest and Biff was like laughing about it. And then it, it's what thwarts him in the third movie. I just think that's so funny. That's great. It's see, and another example of tiny little moments that you wouldn't think anything of. And all of a sudden those are being called back to in the future movies. And that's just so like, so well done. Um, I'm glad that the whole thing with Cara, Cara worked out, Clara, Clara worked out. Oh my God, <laughs> I already forgot her name. Um, because, but I do have like some, I guess, I'm trying to wrap my brain around it questions. I know you guys have explained this to me in the comments before, but I'm still trying to figure out the whole timeline thing. I know she wasn't supposed to be in the original timeline because she originally died, which is why the canyon was named after her. Then obviously that didn't happen because Doc and Marty saved her. So the canyon name was different. So she wasn't supposed to be in that original timeline anymore. So taking her with them made sense because that would have like fixed the current timeline they were in. But then she wasn't supposed to exist at all anymore. So even if they take her, even if they took her, it would have messed up different timelines. <laughs> so are they just in a completely new timeline now? I don't know. I don't know. But it's interesting to think about. It just hurts my brain. Um, obviously seeing the clock tower being made was really cool. I like how they had another one of those moments with like the twin pines with the ravine changing names based off of like what happened in the different timelines. I just thought that was really well done. Um, but yeah, I just loved it. I loved it. You guys let me know all of the little things that I missed in the comments below, please, because I love uh, when you point those out to me. And if you want to take a whack at trying to explain the whole timeline thing, go for it. <laughs> Not sure I'll actually understand it, but you can try. Uh, so like I said, anything that I missed or any cool little tidbits or Easter eggs or things that you would like to point out, that would be fine by me. I love learning all of that. Um, the I do have the next few movies planned, but I'm not going to say which one yet because I don't know which order I'm going to do them in. So I don't want to say and get someone excited and then not do, actually do it in that order. But stay tuned. Like I said, subscribe, hit that bell button. That way you know when I post future videos. Hopefully I will be, will be back to posting every Wednesday new movie reactions. Um, and if you'd like more lightweight content, I do also have a gaming channel and I do stream on Twitch. So you can find me at lightweight gaming over on YouTube or lightweight gaming over on Twitch. Uh, if you're into more gaming content, um, almost at a hundred thousand subscribers on that channel. So we're real close. So if you want to go check that out and throw me a subscribe over there too, that would be really cool. But regardless, I appreciate your support here on this channel. I really hope you did enjoy the reaction to all three of these movies because I absolutely loved them. Uh, so I hope you loved the reaction to them. And I appreciate you all. Have an amazing day.